Hi, I'm acting teacher Michael Bean. I'm based in Vancouver, BC, Canada, here on the West Coast, and I've been teaching for almost 20 years. This is your free lesson for Monday, February the 28th, myfreeactingclass.com. These happen every Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if you were like, geez, how can I find the link? You're in luck. It's right here. Uh, you go to myfreeactingclass.com. You click here for today's lesson. If you wanted to see video from past lessons, and there's many of those, you would scroll down here, click on video archive. That would take you right here. If you wanted to see it in YouTube instead, you could click right here, bah, and that would take you right here. You can see all of the lessons. Uh, so uh, here are the last couple. Uh, booked it, you know, uh, self-tape review, uh, the, another self-tape review, find the changes, how to choose an acting school, how to work in LA. So uh, always covering different stuff. If you have questions, email them my way. If you have self-tapes, all oh, and you want them to be reviewed and you want some notes on them, you're like, man, I would love some help with my self-tapes. Uh, info at myfreeactingclass.com. You don't even have to remember the email address. You can just come here to the website and click the link and it'll take you right to me. So there is the preamble. So today what I want to cover is activity and behavior. So here's my pitch that basically anybody when they read a script, one of the first things that they think about is what is my character feeling? And that's true if somebody's a really experienced actor, it's true if somebody's looking at a script for the very first time. It's just part of that thing that happens when we read a script, and particularly that kind of story, because we're in the world of psychological realism, where the assumption is that you can't just look at exactly what somebody says and know what they're feeling. Right? And if you go back far enough in the history of acting, you get this sort of acting style that seems very unfamiliar to us now, where people just say how they're feeling or indicate it very clearly. But it's been like a hundred years now that if I'm talking to Christina and she says, and I say, Christina, how are you? And she says, I'm fine. That the expectation of the audience is, is she really fine? We've got to look at her face and see what her face is doing. We've got to look at her body language, see what her body language is doing. We've got to look around her to see what else is going on to know if she's fine, even though she says I'm fine. And so that extends, I think, to our reading of a script. And if the character says I'm fine, you're reading it like, yeah, but really, but really. And so this first level of interpretation of story almost always is, here's what my character is feeling. Now, the risk is that if you choose to play feeling, you're putting yourself into a very artificial state immediately. And if you think about when you're meeting a person who is new to you, if that doesn't know you, if you try to show them how you're feeling, you will almost always be experienced as deeply false, right? So if you if your attention is on how I'm going to show this person how happy I am, you're like, hi, I'm putting on this big fake smile because I'm really worried about convincing you about how happy I am. And everybody's looking at you like whoa, what is his deal? What is going on there? And the experience he was false, right? So that is a basic human thing that because the camera sees you with so much intimacy, it's so close to you, happens right away. So the trap is, of course, as an actor, you want to understand what the character's feeling. That as you get better at reading scripts, you'll uncover more and that'll be exciting for you. Oh, I see what they're feeling. They're feeling this, they're feeling that. And then the trap is to play the feeling yeah, and forget that humans don't do that. Humans feel things, of course they do. Telling stories involves feelings, of course it does. Very, very important part of telling a story. But if I'm having an interaction with another real human, if my focus is on how I'm going to feel this thing at Duke as I talk to him, very, very unusual. And so the trick is to first understand the way you want it to come across, but then shift the focus from here, you know, I'm focusing on my own experience to out there. Yeah, and I've talked before about objective and relationship and some of the creative tools for what kind of choices can I make that activate me and keep me focused on that other person, 
so that maybe that result that I want happens over here. Today, I want to talk about activity and behavior because I think that it is, what's the right word, underlooked that uh, people think, oh, you know, what my character's doing isn't that big a deal. Yeah, yeah, it says that they're sweeping. It says that they're chopping vegetables. It says that they are, here's what they're doing in the script. But yeah, that's not a big deal. What matters is the feeling. And I think that the way that you choose to do the behavior in the scene and the activity of your character is what conveys the feeling. I think it is one of the simplest, the easiest, the most effective ways to convey feeling. So I wanna show you some examples from recent students. Uh, and uh, I just pulled some little clips and then I'll talk about each one. You know, each one has some kind of different demo things in terms of technicality. I'll quickly review with me. This is the frame, what the camera sees. This is a like quite a tight medium close up. I push back here. This, uh, and if I push all the way back until you can see my waist, I'm not sure I can quite get back that far. Then this is more of a medium shot. Uh, now, your auditions should be somewhere in the middle there. That's my suggestion, you know, that's the going wisdom for professional self-tapes. Horizontal always, not vertical. Is it light reflected in your eyeballs? That's what makes you look alive. It's called eye light, your eye line, the line between what you're looking at, uh, your eyes and what you're looking at, uh, is very close to camera so that it, uh, the camera can see everything about your eyeballs, but it's never directly at the lens unless you're talking right to the people at home, like I'm doing right now. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much the basics. Neutral background, a blank wall is more than fine. It is actually the sort of normal accepted for auditions right now. So you don't need anything fancy because the light pointed at your eyeballs, you know, a phone or something, you know, that is again, pointed at your eyeballs and nice and close to you for you to be louder and nothing distracting you in the background. So uh, some of the tapes that we're gonna see have that and some of them don't. So you can see for yourself how distracting it is. Uh, I always encourage students to set up for class as though they're doing a self-tape, and I would say about 20% of students do it, you know, and about 80% of students just like stick their phone or their computer on a shelf somewhere and are like, nah, sorry, this is what we're doing, uh, and so you'll see for yourself. Now, the only reason that I recommend just doing that setup over and over again is the more times you do it, the more intuitive it's gonna be, the easier it's gonna feel. And when you get a self-tape, then there's so much less barrier to setting up properly. Cause you're like, oh yeah, just every time I set up, I set up like this, right? Cause the first time maybe it takes like 15 minutes and you're moving stuff around and I gotta get a stack of boxes and now oh, this is at the wrong angle. And, so on, and then the next time it's 10 minutes, you know, and the next three times after that, you know, it's more like five or six. And then for class today, I think it took me 45 seconds, you know, between walking into this room with my laptop, you know, and, you know, turning this on and having it set up properly. Yeah, and you know, that's like, push that, push the piano out of the way, you know, push the, the little desk out, put the laptop there. Like it's all a mess outside of what you can see, but nobody needs to know that. Look how professional I am with my neutral background. Now, I could be wearing pajama bottoms. You'd never know. But I could be. Uh, let's take a look at some of these self tapes. So, talking about behavior and activity and using that to tell a story. What are you doing? Come on, man, get down. Relax. That's not safe. Ethan. Right, so the character is supposed to be climbing a stack of hay bales. And you can see that it's important in the script. You know, it uh, conveys information about like who the character is and what they're feeling. Oh, he's, you know, taking a risk. He's showing off for his friend. He's like, whoa, it's dangerous, but like I'm enjoying myself. None of that comes from here's the face I'm deciding to make. It comes from him committing to this very odd thing of like, he's alone in a room with a blank wall, literally pretending to climb something that doesn't exist, right? So it's tolerating the uncertainty of that and uh, realizing that, like in this case, even if you record it and some of this shows up in the frame, you can just crop it out. 
Okay, so I'm gonna show you as the next clip, the pre-cropped version. So you're like, oh yeah, that does look really awkward. Poor guy, that must've felt really weird. But I wanted you to see first that it works. It's all about commitment. And if he had done that scene, and I have seen this so many times in both class and professional self tapes, where you or the other character are specifically referencing activity and the actor chooses not to do it. So in this case, the other actor says, whoa, what are you doing? Get down. Ah, you know, and I've just seen tapes where the actor just stands there. And the other person says, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> and they've got to like, what, make a face, something? You know, so uh, here's what that looks like without the cropping. What are you doing? Come on, man, get down. Relax. That's not safe. Ethan! Okay, so really concrete example. You know, if he's just looking at the other actor the whole time and saying, dude, relax, completely different story than if his focus is on delightedly climbing the hay bales and he's got to look over at the other guy dismissively. Not only does that put the actor more in that space of I'm in a, a real person in a place doing a thing, but it conveys that story much, much, much more clearly. So concrete example number one. Attention. This is a good movie. Oops. Me? Not that old. Yes. I'm surprised the cloud can even store the amount of selfies you take. Oh, uh, and I kept this one uh, because uh, it's a concrete example. I talked to the actor about like, hey, uh, you brought your hand into the shot and I could see that you didn't have a cell phone. She was like, oh yeah, I just, there was so much going on. I forgot my cell phone's right there. So this is the moment where she for, she's like, oh wait, here's my cell phone. And uh, you know, she takes a moment, you know, uh, like is slightly embarrassed, but then comes right back and seeing with her actual phone in her hand. And so when you want you to see the difference between like, here's somebody miming a phone. And my phone is here, gosh. And then here's you know, her referencing it with the actual phone in her hand. And because now we don't have to do any work to imagine it, the whole thing is gonna read more clearly. How many of these do you need? So what's this movie about? I thought I told you, Sandra Bullock. Okay, so the characters are watching a movie together. You know, she's got her chair turned sideways you know, as, and she's got the actor on one side of the camera and then the movie on the other. Now, if she had the movie here and the actor here, the risk is we would lose some of her face. You know, so uh, two eye lines, one on one side of the camera, one on the other side of the camera. Not only does it make it really clear there's a different relationship, here's Sandra Bullock, here's the person I'm talking to, but also because I have to turn past the camera and keep my face open to camera to talk to this person, then we can be sitting side by side and still uh, have my face open to camera, you don't lose any of my face. Here. And again, very different if she's just sitting here facing her going, come on, watch the movie. You know, it's Sandra Bullock, you know, doesn't tell the story. You know, uh, you're making it very difficult as an actor there to convey feeling because you're not including what the script just hands you for free, you know, which is what's happening physically in the script. In both of these two examples, the phone is written right there in the script. You know, the, uh, the movie that they're watching is written right there in the script. The climbing the hay bales written right there in the script. Sometimes an actor, you need to be creative and go, okay, I'm a teacher, I'm in the classroom. It doesn't say anything about behavior, but I'm going to decide that I've got a stack of papers that I'm grading. Or if somebody has watched last week's review of the BBC audition that Natalia sent us, you know, the doctor, one of the things that I recommended in terms of making her seem more like a doctor who was just at work was, you know, have the clipboard you know, with the papers on it there, you know, to be your charts, you know, super simple, something really simple and grounding like that, you know, and having something actual in your hands. If you are ever in the position that you're going to mind, like let's say that you're having to record with your phone and you don't have another phone, 
and your character's supposed to use the phone. Yeah, like you can use the TV remote, you know, like I've seen that work. You can also just keep it outside of frame. You're like, how can we need, oh my gosh, look at this phone that's in my hand that I'm just going to pretend is real, but I'm actually holding the TV remote and you don't have to know because I'm not going, look, look at this phone. You know, it's just down here. You know, it still does the trick for me personally. Uh, and it helps tell the story, but it, it's in the behavior. It's in the way that you touch and handle the thing. It's in that relationship. Next example. Ow, 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 ow. Oh. 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 oh, good hole, babe. Hell yeah. <sighs> That was a super weird one because the it was a comedy script where it said that they were peeling off nose strips. So husband and wife were in bed, they're peeling off nose strips and then like swap showing each other. You know, and so that one you can't mime, right? Like, and and the act could the actor could like absolutely like put a band-aid on their nose and you know and peel it off. You know, but I would I think that this is a an example of a time where it's like. This scene's not really about that, as long as she's not making a big show of it. She's not like, I've got a pretend thing on my nose, right? She's just covering, okay, good. We can see it's not, there's nothing on her nose, but it's just not that big a deal. You know, and without that physical behavior, the line, ow, 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 good hall, babe, makes no sense. None, zero. It doesn't spell it out. Here's what you do as an actor, but the story makes absolutely no sense if you don't do it. So there you go. Who did this? Whenever you complete a task, be it suctioning phlegm or bathing a patient, tick it off. Uh, each task gets a number value, which is then tallied up at the end of the day into an efficiency score, which is in turn used to evaluate your job performance. Okay, so the character is written as being in a busy hospital. He is having an argument with somebody who works for him, you know, or sort of taking her to task. They, so you look at it and you're like, okay, here's the feeling, here's the relationship. And then there's this one moment that's written in the script where it says, who, who did, you know, look at this, you know, like, who did this? You know, he announces to the room. And then uh, if he's just cleaning up the mess on the cart, that does a lot of conveying how he's feeling and the abruptness and the anger. Whereas if he just stays talking to the person who says, okay, you just you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. You know, it's, um, it's more difficult to tell that story. You know, then we're like, wow, he's not just aggressive. He's like doing this weird dominating psychopath thing. And that's a lot of eye contact. Uh, and so finding ways to engage with the physical environment that help tell the story, right? I'm frustrated with you. And also, you know, I feel like I'm better than you. And I'm telling you that story with the way that I'm just like barely looking at you while doing something. And my actions are showing me, you know, frustration. And actually what I'm doing with my hands is affecting my voice in little ways. And I'm also making my acting job easier. An exercise that I use with actors all the time when they have a scene where they're supposed to be really angry you know, is I'll either give them a task like that, I'll say, take um, t-shirts, like go to, grab your laundry basket and just like start shoving things in a backpack like while you talk or take a t-shirt and just twist it between your hands while you talk to me, right? If it does need to be direct, it's like, oh, Christina, mm -hmm. if I've got that down here, then like you can't really see what I'm doing with my hands. But every time I it's going to affect my voice because it, uh, all of those muscles are connected. And then I don't have to try and do that with my voice, which is going to be much less believable, right? Because you're just going to see through it from the distance of cameras. I can be like, oh, I see him trying to show me instead of uh, I see, instead of I'm figuring out by listening to his tone of voice and watching his behavior, that even though what he's saying is, here are all the ways that you complete this task. It doesn't say I'm frustrated with you. It doesn't say I'm better than you, but I can use my behavior to indicate that. And I can find that in the activity of the scene. So, uh, and the final example. God, this girl hates her mom. 
what are you doing? Oops. Right. So uh, without, you know, now normally I'm not a big fan of pointing. You know, I think that it's something that actors sort of intuitively do because like, this is what the camera can see. So they're like, hey, you, come talk to me. I'm just going to point at the thing that I'm talking about kind of in, because I can't think of what else to do. You know, uh, typically uh, I recommend against that as far as behavior goes. Uh, in that specific example, you know, sort of like the girl who was watching a movie, she was supposed to be referencing something that was playing on a speaker. You know, and so that was the clearest way to do this. She's like, she's got a little like, okay, I'm bobbing the music and then, well, I'm going to reference that thing. And without that, and we did it multiple times, without that, the story did not make as much sense. And the relationship, it was simply not as clear. When she said, wow, it looks like, you know, sounds like this girl really hates her mom. They were like, it was like, what? What girl? Like, is there a girl over there? And the person you're talking to hate their mom? This is very confusing, right? So just putting in that little bit of like, okay, music, that music that I'm listening to, that was the simplest, easiest way of engaging with that external environment and we could find and see. So there are some good, clear, concrete examples. Now we could uh, sort of, let me very quickly show you a script you know, and uh, then we'll uh, think about some kind of physical behavior choices that you could use if you were doing this script. Uh, Christina Duke, do you want to read this one? Okay, great. Christina, you get to be Dana. Uh, you're the like CEO of the development company. And Duke, uh, you're, what's the guy's name? Ryan, maybe? Uh, the, uh, you're Sawyer. Uh, you're the like junior employee, you know, who, uh, who works for Christina, you know, and, you know, Christina's taken to task. So, interior Ridley property development, Dana's office, day. Dana looks at Sawyer seated opposite her desk. Behind her on the credenza, we see her monitor over her shoulder. On that monitor is the article about true love books and cafe with Jamie's smiling photo staring at Sawyer. Dana is not thrilled. Good, so we have immediate information about Dana's emotional state. Your goal is to persuade the holdouts to embrace our deal. I know. To be very clear, this And then again, there's a behavioral note. Right? This, the right the article, you they give you that one for free. Okay. To be very sorry, to be very clear, this is the opposite of that. Well, I understand, which is why I've been working to meet as many owners as possible. Perhaps you should focus on Miss Fug. I don't know. What is Vaughn? Don't worry about it. Well, look, I know Jamie can be very passionate about her causes and how sorry. How, how, how well do you... Where is Jamie? Oh, Jamie, sorry. But Jamie... And then, how... and then there's this, you know, which again is information about how the character is feeling. And we're going to come back to this later and go, okay, wait, how do we put in behavior that tells that so that you don't have to try and do suspicious? Keep going. Jamie, how well do you know Miss Vaughn? Well, we haven't seen each other since high school. But in high school? We dated. Dana's jaw nearly drops. Now, this is a trap for actors. This is a straight indication of how the character is feeling, and it's going to be very tempting if you are the actor playing this role to go. Very tempting to do that. And instead, we're going to look for behavior that does that for you instead. Right here. She was she was your high school sweetheart. We never referred to ourselves as. The that sweet man thing like that. Oh, yeah. Yes, we were high school sweethearts. And now? We're nothing. A friendly nothing. We just had a cooking class together a couple of days ago. It just relaxes Dana somewhat. Now, why is there so much information about what Dana is feeling, even though we're in psychological realism where you like, uh, you've got to do a lot of guessing? Part of that's just a normal thing for stage direction. And part of that's because this is a Hallmark movie. So they're spelling it out a little bit more clearly than they might otherwise. That's good because there's, there can't be any lingering how do you say, animosity between you two. That could imperil this deal. I understand. It's under control. He smiles and hopes to himself that he's right, right? So all these traps for actors, right? If you're playing Sawyer, we've got, he smiles. Uh, the, um, where, where was the other one? Sawyer shifts uncomfortable, right? Plays it light. 
right? So it's not that those are not useful information. They are. The writer's giving you the best information that they can on what the character's feeling. You're the one who has to translate that into something that your character is doing. So Dana is not thrilled, right? So if you are, uh, so let's let's just look at this first moment. You know, uh, you know Dana is not thrilled, uh, and then you know the maybe um, you know enough. We've got this here. Points back to the article, so we've got that as reference. Perhaps you should focus on Miss Vaughn, right? So uh, let's look at those three for behavior, right? So not thrilled. Opposite of that, should focus on Miss Vaughn. So. If you are the CEO of this development company, you've just been looking an art at an article, you know, and now you're like, hello, this thing that's happening, not what you, what I told you to do, right? The, what is, what is your character or what could your character be doing at the outset that says, this is my company, I'm a busy CEO, you know? And, and so your character could be finishing a phone call, right? You could put in an ad lib of, yeah, he's here. I'll talk to him. Yeah, and maybe you cut all of that out. You know, and, and you just start with, okay. Now I'm gonna talk to you, but it's really clear that like I'm busy. I've only got 30 seconds for this conversation because I then I have to go back to you know like making money and doing my thing. Maybe you do that and put in the ad lib. You know, maybe uh, you maybe you do that and finish typing a note. What are we doing about the thing? Okay. You know, I'm going to talk to you. Maybe you even start talking while you're typing the note. You know, maybe it's you know uh, like looking over the portfolio and closing the portfolio. It's the way you close the portfolio that says, "Okay, I'm saying the line and I'm trying to be polite, but my hands are saying like you are finished." Uh, maybe it's something simple like that. But you're just like, "Okay, I'm I'm at a desk." I have a computer. What might I have on the desk? What do I, Michael Bean, the actor, just have here in front of me in the room? Don't get too complicated. If you look at it, you're like, oh, it's definitely that she's got a complex paperclip sculpture and you don't happen to have a complex paperclip sculpture very close to hand. And even if you do, don't use that because that'll the risk is it'll be more interesting than your face. You know, the, right, don't get too elaborate. You know, keep it nice and simple. And it's really just about that physical behavior. You know, then you've got the other thing in the scene, the article, right? So you, that one they've given to you. You're just like, okay, I'm talking to you. And now I'm just gonna take a second and look at this article and the way that I look at the article, right? It just says, you know, points to article, you know, but I could go and scroll back up to find the picture that bothers me the most. And the way that I do that while interacting, you know, the writer's got to go lines, behavior lines, but me, the actor, you know, I get to meld them, right? That's what brings it to life. You know, and then you know, we've got that third moment in the script, perhaps you should focus on Miss Vaughn, right? Maybe that's where I close the portfolio. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the computer, you know, and I'm going to like sit back in my seat and I've got right like this, you know, is um, risks being indicating you know, and so you know, is it then, okay, I did the like sitting back in my seat and they're like, nah, it looks kind of like an actor thing. So is that instead where I, you know, just put the cap on the pen and put it down, you know, uh, uh, the, and then, and that sort of pointedness of that helps impact the line. And it's like crisp, clear, I'm the boss. Maybe you know, this is not prescriptive. It's not a, here's what you do. It's a experiment, find for yourself, uh, doing or activity that's going to help take you into it. So that is my lesson for today on doing an activity. Thanks for showing up in person. If you're watching this at home, thanks for watching at home. Uh, you can find more of these on our website, in the video archive, or at the YouTube channel. Just go to myfreeactingclass.com. This is Michael Bean, acting teacher, signing off. I'll see you next week at 5 p.m. PST. Thanks. Bye. Bye.